Thank you for tuning in to Shop Talk with Auto E-Clinic. What we want to talk about today, we had a 2005 Chrysler Town & Country Van Touring Edition 3.8. Came in, failed to spec inspection. The code that it had was a P0420. 20. 20. 420. I, I blanked. Not the, the POS book at 420. <laughs> no, this was an actual powertrains code 420. Right. Okay. Obviously, maybe you did the other one. <laughs> That's what the smoke test. I thought you was talking about the other smoke test. Oh, okay. My bad. So we had a P0420, catalyst efficiency below threshold. Now, the catalytic converter burns what the engine does not. We've been over this before, but it's very, very important. And if uh, it doesn't pass, it doesn't meet standards, then it will not pass inspection, of course, here in North Carolina, and it will throw a check engine light. Now, even California, they have even tougher standards there. Now, once again, the catalytic, catalytic converter has to maintain a 90% efficiency of burning what the engine does not. Over time, of course, they just get stopped up. They just get uh, stuff built up on them, and they just don't perform as efficient. Of course, what we did in the video, though, we made sure the bank one, sensor one, and bank one, sensor two, the sensor before the catalytic converter and the sensor after the catalytic converter were working properly. In this case, we found there should have been a difference between the sensor before the cat and the sensor after the cat. There should have been some kind of difference, and we really didn't see a difference at all. See no difference. That's telling us right there that it is definitely a catalytic converter. Now, on this catalytic converter, you, uh, there's options where you can go to an exhaust shop and have it cut and have it universal welded in. I don't recommend that. I've seen too many, I've seen uh, such a high failure rate where they'll last maybe a year and then you're doing it again. Sometimes less. I've seen them exactly where they last less. Now, of course, if you can go to the dealer, it's definitely a good option to go to the dealer on these things, but they are crazy expensive from the dealer, right, Aaron? Oh, yeah. They are expensive, that's for sure. Anywhere from five to $1,500. Correct. Plus the core. Yeah, they, they want their core back. <laughs> Now, I've seen some aftermarket applications that I've used that offer a good five-year warranty, and they actually offer an affordable price to the customer. I've been very happy with those thus far. But uh, once again, they are a, a direct fit catalytic converter option. They're not a cut and weld in assembly. They're an actual bolt-in assembly, just like your regular exhaust. Mm -hmm. it, looks, it looks like a better quality product, and once again, you had the same size block. And that's what matters really here, Aaron is the size of the block of the catalytic converter. Most of your universals are just a four inch block and that's the material in there where a lot of requires, especially your newer, more high efficient cars require a bigger block so they can burn more what the engine is not to make them more efficient. A lot of your exhaust guys just don't understand that. They'll just weld at anything and then you're throwing a code a week later. Oh yeah. Or you know that they don't last as long. They only last maybe a year and then you're spending that money again when if you would just bought a, uh, mm -hmm. a good converter with a good five year warranty with the direct fit or a go OE, you know it's going to last. Oh, yeah. Better spend a little bit more now than keep doing it over and over, keep failing the inspection next year. It's a lot of money to invest and to do it over again. You ever heard the expression, I'm too poor to be cheap? <laughs> I am yes. too poor to be cheap. I cannot be cheap and sp keep spending that money every year if I, versus I can just go ahead and spend it once and do it right, and I know I've got five years. Then I can take that extra money and spend it on beer. <laughs> or that 420 stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, remember, autoeclinic.com, working on a database. So go ahead and submit your question and answers there so we can go ahead and build all this information for you guys. Follow us on YouTube, right? Follow us on Facebook. Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Wow. Had it backwards. Um, email, email us at info at autoeclinic.com. Any kind of questions, concerns. Like I said, really, though, once you head to the website, and go ahead and post your question on there. It's going to be easier for us to get back to you, and that way we can build this database that can help everybody out. That's what we're really here to try to do is help everybody out with some, uh, some uh, easy diagnostic procedures and then some quick tips. Oh, yeah, just give you kind of an idea. Some things you can do on your own, some things you can, but it does give you an idea of, hey, when I take this to the repair shop, and if the repair shop's doing their job diagnosing it correctly, this is why I'm having to pay the money to do it because all these steps, all the equipment they have to have, the computer software, so. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, guys, and remember, I wear my sunglasses at night because we're cool, and it's a great song.